Hi, I'm Carl Seibert. Thanks for joining me. This video is about keywords. It's going to be a little different than most of our videos because it's not really a how-to. This is sort of an introduction to keywording. We're going to talk about keywording concepts and we're going to talk about things to think about before we make a plan and start to keyword our own work. Now, this video is a companion to a written blog post that's really quite lengthy. And in that post, I try to pose questions and scenarios to stimulate thought about making the decisions that go into making a plan for keywording your work. At the end of it, you should come out with a keywording strategy that'll work for you in your circumstance, with your collection, and with the systems you're likely to use to file and find photos. And the beginnings of something called a controlled vocabulary, which is just a list of keywords. And it might be one big fancy document that literally is such a thing on a technical level that you can import into software and use it for hierarchical or structured keywording. Or it might be a bunch of smaller lists, but either way, the point of the thing is just like our templates that we use when we apply metadata to pictures. You don't want to type these things. You want to choose them from an existing list. Now, from time to time, obviously, you're going to have to add new things to that list. But you want to choose by clicking on things. You don't want to type. For all the very same reasons, only more so, because keywords are abstract. They're just lists of words. You'll make an error in a keyword and you'll never see it. It's not like in a sentence where it's fairly easy to see your errors. Now, keywording is not a substitute for captions. Keywords and captions serve entirely different masters. Captions serve the whole world. When you publish a photo, you need to tell people what's in the photo and you need to tell people who you are. Keywords, on the other hand, are just for us. The point of keywords is so that we can find stuff later. And keywords are customized for our needs, our collections, our systems, and our photos. Now, we should define a term here before we go any further. Let's take a look at this photo in Photo Mechanic. Keywords are, for us, Specifically, a list of words in the IPTC keyword field that helps us out with things that aren't in the captions. Here's an actionable tip, just like click on it, don't type it. Check and make sure that your software is putting those commas in, whether it's your software or whether it's your fingers, should be your software. If you're in doubt, send me a copy of a file and I'll look for you and make sure. Because one of the things that we want to do in all of this is future-proof our collection as much as possible. And later, the reason why I recommend you leave those commas in, even though most modern software doesn't really require them anymore, it's because later, if you need to take them out to accommodate a new system, that's going to be pretty easy. On the other hand, if you need to somehow figure out how to put those commas in to 300,000 photos, that's not going to be so easy at all. Now, while we're talking about future proofing, we should mention for our specific definition, keywords are words in the IPTC keyword field. Here's another actionable piece of advice. So, hey, this is a kind of a how to in some ways, isn't it? If your software puts your keywords anywhere else other than that industry standard IPTC field, run the other way as fast as you possibly can. Because as you go through life and you upgrade your system and you change, or maybe you send pictures to someone else to include in some other system, you don't want your work to be lost. You don't want to lose the value that those keywords gave you. You want them to be embedded in your pictures, 
in the industry standard place where all software that's worth its salt can find them and act on them. Now let's talk about what keywords are good for, what they can do for us that our captions don't do for us. And keywords don't take the place of captions, except in specialized circumstances. Keywords can add search terms to a record that don't fit in the caption, that just aren't necessarily there. Things like synonyms, bike for bicycle, for example. Keywords are very good at concepts, things like teamwork. Not that easy to work the word teamwork into a relevant caption for a picture of people who are doing something in an office when the point is what they're doing in the office. But later, you might need a picture of teamwork, and that keyword will serve you well. Think about that when you're choosing your keywords. Does it fit my, my collection? Does it fit my needs? Do I anticipate in the future that people, who might just be me, when they search for this photo, are going to search in that way? Keywords also categorize photos. You can tell the difference between headshots and pictures on the plant floor, for example. When I worked at a newspaper, we owned over 2 million photos. At any given moment, anywhere between 50 and 100,000 of them would return to the search term football. From time to time, I needed a picture of a football. Now, there were about a half a dozen pictures of footballs in there. And we didn't use keywords, which normally didn't hurt us. We didn't have to search for pictures of teamwork that often. But for that football, if we had a keyword that said product shot or isolated or on white or something like that, that would return the six footballs that I was interested in, instead of the 100,000 pictures of people playing with footballs that I wasn't, I would have been a happy camper. Those are the kinds of things that keywords do really well. Now, what keywords don't do so well is, for one thing, they don't tell you what's in the photo. Keywords are little categories. They're like little buckets. And you don't keyword down to the individual photo level, except in unusual circumstances. There are certain uses where, yes, you would do that. If you were a merchant, for example, you might put the SKU number of a piece of merchandise in as a keyword because there's virtually no way to work that into a caption that won't sound pretty silly. But for most of us, there are little buckets. Each little bucket would contain, at the least, probably a couple of dozen pictures. So in that way, they aren't specific enough to tell us what's really in the photo. And one of the things that's great about keywords is the synonym thing. Three people in the office around the copier. It's extremely tempting and probably not a bad idea to use Xerox as one of your keywords. That copier might be a Kyocera, it might be an IBM. So you can't work backwards from the keyword to the picture and tell what's there. Keywords help you bring the pictures back. Then you look at them and you look at the captions. You do what other, other research is necessary. But you can't trust that because you see something as a keyword that that indeed is going to be what's in the picture. Now, keywords are specific to your collection, to the relevance in your collection. If we remember from last time, we looked at the hockey pictures from Elliot Schechter. And the keywords assigned to those hockey pictures included hockey and National Hockey League and stuff like that. Those keywords were supplied by Elliot's client, the National Hockey League, but they were obviously intended for other collections. They were intended for a, a user who has sports pictures that might be hockey or lacrosse or basketball or swimming or bicycling or whatever. Now, keywords are also specific to our systems. This is a slippery slope because, of course, you will change systems. You will upgrade. That's why your data needs to be portable. 
but you also have to be aware of the quirks of your particular system, what it can and can't do. Desktop systems, like Photo Mechanic or Lightroom, and I should add here that Photo Mechanic only really works as a digital asset management system on the Macintosh platform, because their search function, which we'll take a look at right here, uses Apple's Spotlight API to function. Basically, Photo Mechanic can look at your entire Spotlight database and search it field for field. And unfortunately, on the Windows side, they weren't able to implement that. But desktop systems have certain limitations that are consistent. For one, I don't know of a single desktop system that can do a not search. So let's say you have, as a keyword, NSFW for not safe for work. That's a pretty logical keyword. And everybody has some not safe for work pictures in their collection. Probably not very many, probably a percentage point of, or two of the whole collection. So it would be kind of silly to have to keyword every other picture in the collection as being safe for work. But desktop software can't do a not. So you can't say, show me all of the pictures of this person, but exclude the not safe for work ones. Like you couldn't say, show me all of the pictures of football, but exclude the product shots of footballs. Now in the one case, no harm, no foul. But in the other case, those one or two percent of your collection are pictures that you absolutely don't want to return. And you're kind of out of luck. Because using keywords to exclude a certain class of pictures from search returns is an absolutely valid thing. And people do that. And big time systems are able to respond to it and use it. But smaller ones won't. And I suppose we should take a look here. And if we look in the photo mechanic instance in the search dialog, we can see that we can search one field against another, except we can't say, but in the keywords, exclude these. Because we don't have, in this pull down here, we don't have does not contain. In Lightroom, on the other hand, we can see that our pull down does have a does not contain, which is the same thing, it's a Boolean not, does have that option, but in Lightroom, we can't do a field, a search across fields. We can't say, show me all the pictures where the caption has one kind of flower, but the keywords say not some certain class of flower. Can't do it. So we're going to have to compensate for that. So once again, go to the blog post, read all of those considerations, Think about it. Make a plan that works for yourself. Make a list of keywords that you can use. Now, the list will grow over time, but you've got to start someplace. And it shouldn't be a list of thousands of terms. It should be a list of a few dozen or a few hundred for most collections. And then we will reconvene in the next set of videos. We're actually going to look in software. We're going to start out in Photo Mechanic. And we're going to be practical again. It's going to be a how-to. There'll be a lot less on my face. And we'll find out how to actually use these things. So once again, I'm Carl Seibert. Thank you for joining me. Please reach out on social media or in the comments. And until next time, mind your metadata.